And welcome back to the Sports Night interview. And today we're talking NFL football. We've got a great guest joining us here today. We're joined by Mo Moten. Mo covers the NFL for Bleacher Report. He also covers the Raiders for us at Sportsnot. I'm sure you've read some of his work up at Sportsnot.com. And you can also find Mo on TV. And Mo, go ahead. Why don't you tell us when and where we can find you on TV? Mondays and Thursdays, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific Time. I'm on there with Koi Wire. We On Mondays, we, we recap on what happened on Sunday. On Thursdays, we preview what's coming up on the weekend. We have a lot of fun with it. Koi is a former player, so I give him some jabs about his Bills and Falcons, but we have a, we enjoy our time there, and I'll talk a lot of NFL football, of course. Absolutely. That's must-see TV. Got to tune into that. And Mo, we know you're a very busy man, so I, I do appreciate you uh, giving us a few minutes here today. Let's, let's jump right into some headlines here. Uh, as week two got underway on Thursday night in Miami, my, uh, the Bills were uh, victorious in that game 31-10. to 10. Um, I thought it would be more competitive myself, but it seems like the Bills lately, they own Miami. Um, the defense was the star of the show last night, uh, unlike in week one where, where Josh Allen was kind of put the team on his shoulder, put his cape on, uh, had two touchdown passes and two rushing touchdowns, but it was a defense last night, as I said. Let's just start there. Let's just get some of your overall thoughts and takeaways from, from the Bills' win on Thursday Night Football. Well, I'll sit here and say I I underrated the Bills uh, coming into the season. I thought losing some of the playmakers that they had, not just Stefan Diggs, but Matt Milano being out with an injury, I thought that would hurt them. They had some injuries, as you mentioned, coming into the game. Secondary banged up. Teron Johnson in the slot not playing. Ingram fills in, gets an interception. Yeah. So the Bills are, are still the kings of the AFC East as far as I'm concerned until proven otherwise, as long as Josh Allen is healthy. Josh Allen didn't even have to throw for 150 yards in that game to win it, as you pointed out. The defense stepped up, and that's kudos to Sean McDermott, who I believe is calling plays right now after losing his defense coordinator last year. As for the Dolphins, they're bra they're back on the fraud alert. I, I Look, I thought the Dolphins were going to be a different football team because they can have a three-headed monster in the backfield. Now, of course, Raheem Mostert did not play because of injury, a chest injury. But Devon A. Chan wound up playing uh, through an ankle injury. They have Jalen Wright out there, their rookie, who didn't get a lot of run, but he has some speed. But this Dolphins team is now in trouble for the obvious reason that Tua Tungavailoa is going to be out indefinitely. We don't know when he's going to be back. Of course, for him, it's more about life than football. Yep. He has suffered multiple concussions within a calendar year. I remember going back to a Thursday night game against the Bengals where he suffered a concussion. He was staggering to the ground. Yeah. And this was kind of scary in that regard because you could see immediately he was in the fencing position with his fist balled up that you knew was a concussion. And now with the Dolphins saying that they're going to roll with Skylar Thompson and until further notice and they're going to sign someone but Skyler Thompson is the guy lets me know that the Dolphins are already thinking about drafting a quarterback in 2025 not to say that they're tanking but they're in a position where they say well if Skyler Thompson turns into a serviceable quarterback so be it we sneak into the playoffs but if he doesn't we get a top draft pick we get a new quarterback because we don't know when Tua Tungavailoa is going to be back. Yeah, and and you mentioned they they may have to go out and and, and pick somebody up. Of course, Ryan Tannehill is a, is a name that might make a lot of sense. He played for the team years ago, and he's out there in the market, and he could be a serviceable player in the league, I believe, at this point. Uh, I want to just kind of stay on that topic of of Tua. I mean, I know you mentioned we don't really know when he'll return. We, you know, if you turn on the radio today or you look on the internet, you're you're seeing all the conversation about him. Everybody's chiming in uh, with their thoughts on you know when he should return, if he's healthy, should he retire? Uh, you know, what do you think might happen? I mean, do, do you think that he may try to return when he does clear protocol? Or, I mean, I know between the 22 and the 23 seasons, he did at least have the conversation with his family about what his future might look like, the possibilities of retiring. I was just reading today that I know his mother was really urging him to retire after the last series of concussions he had. Do you think that is a possibility that we could see him walk away from the game this year? I think it depends on what the after effects of this last concussion are. Now, reportedly, he was responsive, all feeling in his extremities. He was communicating with his family, went into the locker room and spoke to his teammates after the game. So all signs point that he's okay uh, on the surface. But as we all know, with these concussions, they can have long-term effects and lingering effects. And I think if there are some visible issues there, he may actually retire. Now, if he if he doesn't feel any strong effects from it, I think he'll try to push to come back. Knowing his 
his attitude, a lot of people, I know his his toughness was questioned at one point, and he kind of fired back last offseason about that. I, I think too is in a situation where he he just got signed to an extension, a big money extension. And I think the the person in him is gonna want to pay that back in a way to the Dolphins to say, okay, I'm gonna try to come back and fulfill that contract. But again, if the if the lingering issues from this concussion are just too much and his family is seeing it and other people are noticing it. I think he has no choice but to step away from the game because you can't play football trying to protect yourself. Playing football in itself is putting yourself in harm's way. There are human collisions on every play. This concussion issue could keep going. It can happen again as soon as he gets back, however long he's out of the game. So he has to think about his life long term and not his short term career. Yeah, absolutely. Very well said there, Mo. And we, we we hope the best for Tua. And I and I do hope that we get to see him out there again at some point this season. Let's let's shift our conversation now. I wanted to I want to ask you about a few teams that started out the season 0 and 1. And I know it's early, and I'm not trying to uh you know hit the panic button for these teams, but I do think there are some concerns for some teams that are out there. I want to first start with uh let's start with the Ravens. Okay. They had to uh, they play the Raiders this week, and I know that they nearly beat the Chiefs last week if it wasn't for uh you know, Isaiah Likely's toe just being on that line. Who knows? They could have walked away and won that game. Uh, but the reason that I bring them up is because if somehow they should they should slip up and 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 not beat the Raiders this week, I was looking at their schedule. They have the Cowboys in week three and the Bills in week four. And and all of a sudden you start the season 0-2 and you're looking at Dallas and Buffalo in the next two weeks, you might start to feel a little bit of pressure. And we all know that the percentages of teams that start 0 and 3 making the playoffs it's not a high it's not a very high percentage i believe it's only 6 teams that have made the playoffs that have started 0 and 3 so i just want to get some of your thoughts on the ravens as they look to uh right the ship here in, in week 2 as a responsible betting man the ravens are the biggest favorites this weekend to win their football game against the raiders hey if you're a super bowl team what's the old saying you got to beat the teams that you're supposed to beat and the ravens are supposed to beat the raiders at home with extra days of preparation. Uh, oh, by the way, John Harbaugh's brother, Jim, just played the Raiders. So, you know, they're probably sharing brotherly secrets there. So the Ravens should come away with this win over the Raiders because they can do a lot of what the Chargers did, but better as far as running the football. You got Derrick Henry, you got a dynamic quarterback, a more dynamic quarterback than the Chargers had, uh, have in Justin Herbert with Lamar Jackson, two-time MVP, by the way. And now you have a two-headed monster at the tight end position. You mentioned Isaiah Likely. You still have Mark Andrews. So that they're going to give the Raiders a lot of issues defensively, even though the Raiders do have a stout defense in some regards, especially against the the pass but when you look at the ravens the urgency has to be there you talked about the low percentage of teams going 0 and 3 to make it to the playoffs the most recent team to in my memory to go 0 and 2 and make the playoffs the cincinnati Bengals in 2022 yep. started 0 and 2 finished the season i believe 12 and 4 because that game against the bills didn't end uh didn't finish because of demar hamlin's uh uh scary injury but the Bengals did it with a franchise quarterback i believe the raiders the ravens excuse me could do it but you don't want to put yourself in that position and i don't think they will i think they come away with the win over the Raiders this weekend. Perfect segue to my next question. My next team, you mentioned the Bengals being one of the teams that started out 0-2 and made it to the Super Bowl. I want to ask you about the Bengals. It was a very, very disappointing performance for them last week to, to lose to the Patriots. Now this week they had to arrow, had a very tough place to play. Uh, again, I, I was looking at their schedule. Their schedule not as tough in the next couple of weeks, but again, you never want to get off to an 0-2 start, but it's going to be tough not to do that. It's going to be tough to avoid that playing against the Chiefs this week in Arrowhead. What do you think about that? I have a theory of why the Bengals are a bit sluggish. Now, they've had some contract issues or, or negotiations back and forth with T. Higgins. And or that were basically non-existent from T. Higgins' point of view, and with Jamar Chase, who's still waiting to get his contract. I, I think not to say that these players are are not giving it their all because they didn't get the deals that they want, but I think there's some there's some sluggishness there because of that. Jamar Chase has missed a lot of time during the offseason with that uh, contract dispute back and forth. I do think the Bengals will be fine. They are going to play a third place schedule, as you said. Their schedule isn't as daunting as the Ravens going forward. But when you're going against the Chiefs, I don't expect them to win this game without T. Higgins. I think that offense is very different without T. Higgins. T. Higgins is doubtful with a hamstring injury, so this be consecutive games he's missed. So you're depending basically on Jamar Chase to get you through because the, the Bengals don't have an established third wide receiver. Remember, Tyler Boyd is now with the Tennessee Titans. Uh, Joe Mixon, who had a great uh, opening game with the Tex Houston Texans, is now not is not no longer in the backfield. So you don't have that 
Pro Bowl running back. You're missing your you know you don't have that slot reliable slot wide receiver. Your your wide receiver two is down with an injury possibly. It's Jamar Chase or nothing for this offense. And I, I think right now with the Chiefs, the firepower they had, even without Hollywood Brown, we saw what Xavier Worthy did against that Ravens defense. The Chiefs have enough firepower to get it done against the Bengals, send them to 0-2. But as I said, the Bengals are used to starting out 0-2. Last year, they started 0-2, battled back to 5-4 and before Joe Burrow got hurt. And as I mentioned before, the year before, 0-2 in 2022, still came back 12-4 and and made the playoffs, went all the way to the AFC Championship game. So I'm not worried about the Bengals, even if they lose this game, but I don't expect them to win it against the Chiefs. Yeah, if there's one team that has shown that they can bounce back from an 0-2, it is the Bengals. So it's becoming kind of an annual thing with Cincinnati. I want to ask you about the Green Bay Packers. Not only did they lose the game last week, which was a a very, you know, to a tough team in in the Lions, but they also lost their starting quarterback, as we know, with the sprain MCL. The timeline for his return, it seems a bit murky right now. I keep reading different things four to six weeks, but they're not completely ruling him out. So I'm not sure exactly when we're going to see him. I still think he's going to miss a couple of games. Now they hand over the reins to the offense to Malik Willis, who has not had a very good, uh, you know, start to his career. I guess you could say it. Um, he was traded from Tennessee to Green Bay, and and so you know I would have some concerns about that if I'm a Green Bay fan. What what what's your panic meter for the the Packers right now? That that division is 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 a little bit improved. You got the Lions, who you, you assume are going to be you know at the the top. Who knows what the you know the Vikings are going to get from from Sam Darnold? But are you at all concerned with uh, the Packers without Jordan Love for potentially you know some some ex- extended time here? If the Packers had put Jordan Love on injured reserve, my panic meter would be about a six or a seven. But they didn't, which indicates that they don't expect him to be out more than three games. Because once you go on IR, you have to miss four games at minimum. So with their expectation to me, because he's still on the active roster, is he's going to miss two to three games. So let's say the Packers lose two out of three of those. You get Jordan Love back and he's healthy. I still think they're fine in the NFC because I still think the NFC is the weaker conference. But if if Jordan Love for some reason misses more time or if the Packers lose all three of their next games and they start out 0-4, that's too deep of a hole yeah. to me. They have to win at least one of these next three games. My question for them is, why not sign a Ryan, Ryan Tannehill or have a, you know, go get Josh Dobbs, even if you have to do it for two to three weeks, simply because you mentioned Malik Willis. He has played in 12 games. He has started in three of them. And he has no touchdown passes, Oof. three interceptions. He, he is not a pocket passing quarterback. He, he doesn't seem comfortable in the pocket. He has issues letting go of the ball. He holds it all. He holds on to it too long. You saw in the game against Brazil, he's put in late and I know it's late, but he didn't even get the Hail Mary off to give the Packers a chance. <laughs> uh, he got sacked. So uh, Matt LaFleur has to get into his ear and say, look, you got to let the ball go. Uh, maybe they drop some quick plays, a quick short completions for him. But if they can squeak out one game, and I think they can, the Colts uh, run defense is pretty weak. I'm not saying they beat the Colts, but I think it's going to be a heavy Josh Jacobs game who they signed this offseason. Emmanuel Wilson had a pretty decent showing in the Brazil game. We've had uh, four carries for 46 yards. They also drafted uh, Marshawn Lloyd, uh, who's, I believe, a third rounder. We'll see mm-hmm. if he's healthy enough to play. They can run the ball and win at least one of these three games and lower my panic meter just a little bit. Yeah, and of course, I forgot to mention the Chicago Bears as the other team in that division. Although they didn't look great last week, they did get the win, and that is a team that I do expect will will get better here with 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 more time. Uh, I think they'll be in the mix as well this this year, maybe for a wild card position. The final 0-1 team that I want to ask you about, we're going to go out to your neck of the woods here with this one. I'm sure you're hearing about this all over the place in the streets of New York. I want to ask you about the Jets. Now, that was a dismal performance from that defense. Um, I know this defense is touted as you know a top-five defense in the league. I drafted them as my fantasy defense, <laughs> but... You know, they got ran all over without Christian McCaffrey, right? That wasn't, we didn't even, he didn't even play the game. So I know I walked away from that game with some concerns for the defense. You know, we know about Hassan Reddick. He, they could absolutely use a pass rusher on that team, but you know, they do have a chance to bounce back this week against a Titans team. I uh, just want to get some of your thoughts on the Jets. Did we overrate them this year or do you think they're going to settle down and be okay here? Yeah, I'm not overreacting to this game. Just note the Jets didn't play their starters pretty much in the preseason. Aaron Rodgers, I know, did not play a snap in the preseason. 
He hadn't played a full football game in 20 months before that Monday night football matchup against a Super Bowl contending 49ers squad. Now, I know they didn't have Christian McCaffrey, but if anybody can draw up a run play, it's Kyle Shanahan. Yeah. He is the master at it, no matter who's back there. Elijah Mitchell did it for, for a bit, and he's hurt now. But I'm not surprised that Jordan Mason was able to go in there and run for 147 yards. Uh, but the Jets' defense run specifically wasn't good last year. Uh, I believe it was in the 20s. It was like 25th last year against the run. So they've had issues against the run. So, again, I'm not surprised that they had issues against a Kyle Shanahan coach team that runs the ball efficiently and very well. But I'm not worried about them going forward. They have the Titans coming up, as you mentioned. After that, they have the Patriots at home, I believe. And then they have the Denver Broncos. I could see them winning all three of those games because they're going to clearly have the better team, the better quarterback. Aaron Rodgers can knock off some rust because I expected him to have to be a bit rusty. Again, almost two years not playing a full football game. You had to temper your expectations early in the season for the Jets, but this schedule is set up so that they can rattle off some wins and still be fine to make the playoffs. Absolutely. I know, I know Jets fans can be a little bit emotional, but I'm sure in, in a couple of weeks, if we look back and they're three and one, They'll settle down. They'll be they'll be pretty happy with that. But uh, he is Mo Moten. You can follow him on X at Mo Moten. You can follow him. You can find him on TNT. You can follow his work at Sports Night. He covers the Raiders for us. And of course, you can follow his work over at Bleacher Report. He's everywhere. You can't miss him. Mo, we thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, Evan. 